Hi, my name is uh, Joyce Wu, and I'm a professor at the in the Department of Internal Medicine in the Division of Rheumatology and Immunology at the OSU. And here is my email info. My lab is interested in autoimmune disease. This is a condition where immune system mistakenly attacking health self tissue. There are about 50 million Americans um, have this kind of symptom. There's a hundred type of autoimmune disease. The one that we are most interested in is the rheumatoid arthritis, which is a, one of the major type of autoimmune disease. Before I share you with our project, I want to um, show you these really daunting figures. So in the past few decades, autoimmune disease has rising sharply. And as you can see here, type one, type, take type 1 diabetes as an example. In the past 30 years, it has triplicated. The disease we are interested in, the rheumatic disease, has been increased at 7.1% in annually um, at the past 30 years. All this is too quick to be explained by the genetic basis. And what is changing uh, quickly is also we have eating, start eating a lot of processed food like hamburger. We also start to have a lot of strict hygiene practice and we have uh, administrate uh, a lot of time with antibiotics. All these can change, um, can cause dysbiosis also known as the imbalance of the gut microbiota. And that can actually uh, lead to uh, several types of autoimmune disease. So the source of microbiota can be maternal or local environment. Maternal is mostly through the birth. Um, and then the environment is through action like this. So next time if you see someone do that, maybe that's actually not such a bad thing. So the big question we have is how the microbiota in the gut can distally impact the disease outside the gut, like in the joint or in the lung. Our hypothesis is that the gut microbiota can trigger autoimmune disease by enhancing the migration of gut-derived immune cells to the systemic side. So here, systemic just means the non-gut associate site. We are mostly interested in T cell biology. The cell type we are most interested in is TFH cells and TA17 cells and Treg cells. So TA17 and TFH cells are more um, important for boosting the immune response, while Treg is like police in the immune system. It can dampen, uh, decrease other T cells activity. The mouse model we use is called KB by mouse model. And as you can see, um, when we cross the T cell transgene with NOD mice, you can see the mouse spontaneously develop arthritis, as you can see here, compared to a normal mouse. So the microbiota is mostly stay in a very respectful distance from the human gut. So as you can see here, the green stain for the microbiota in our gut and the blue is our intestine cells. There is actually a very nice 50 micrometer distance, um, which Laura Hooper's group called this demilitarized zone. Um, but everything, just like everything in life, there's some exception. There's some bacteria can actually get sneak in and get really close to our host. So I don't know if you can see this very well, but there is this segmented filament like bacteria here, which is called segmented filamentous bacteria. As you can see here, they are like segmented like. So this type of bacteria can really get close to host and impact our immune system. So this is the bacteria my lab is mostly focused on. But we also um, working on um, some other human pathobiome, the human pathological commensal bacteria by collaborating with a, a group in uh, here is at Harvard. This is another group um, at Cornell. We um, collaborate with uh, uh, these two groups and identify uh, human commensal that can also enhance the arthritis development. 
And uh, one of the tools we developed in the lab is a surgical system to track single cell migration from the gut to this uh, gut distal site. Um, here you can see that the KICK-GR photoconvertible model, typically the cell express the green fluorescence protein. After surgical uh, survival surgery with violet laser treatment, uh, after 30 seconds, you can see all the green cell become red cells. Three days after, um, we will open the mice uh, up again and looking for the red cell, which we indicate three days ago, they are actually in the gut. And as you can see, some of the cells would actually um, having these red cells as mostly as the cells is green, but some of them will be red. And we found out that in this experiment that the bacteria we are interested in as a bee can actually increase the migration of the t flex helper cell, TFH cell from the gut. So for the future direction, the lab has two major projects. One is a gut joint axis. In this, we are interested in the plasticity of how T17 cells can become other type of T cells that increase their pathogenicity. The other things we are interested in is how these cells migrate out of the gut and then enter systemic site to cause the harm. We are also interested in the bacteria in our gut can actually cause a, a less exhaustion last tiring type of T cells, which is actually very good for tumor immunity, but in autoimmunity, when the cell are less exhausted, they can create even more problem for autoimmunity. So the other things we are interested in is gut-lung axis. In this case, we are interested in how oxygen and hypoxia environment that created the increase of the HIF-1 alpha um, this is actually a factor that won Nobel Prize not too long ago, can actually impact the development of T17 cells, the pro inferentory T cells, and T-Rex cell, which is a police um, of the T cell field. Um, they can damping uh, reduce T17 immune activity and how this then result in the um, development uh, or resolving of the lung pathology. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, please contact me if you are interested in Rotate in my lab. Thank you. Bye-bye.